Hello, my name is Mike Manning. I'm a physical scientist with the USGS. My office is located in Jackson, Mississippi, which is a part of the larger five state center, which we call the Lower Mississippi Gulf Water Science Center. Today, we're standing on the Eastern Bluff Line in Vicksburg, overlooking the mighty Mississippi River. At this location, this river drains over 1.1 million square miles of the United States. Claire? Hi, I'm Claire Rose. I'm also a physical scientist at the Lower Mississippi Gulf Water Science Center with the U.S. Geological Survey. And I'm part of the Large River Monitoring Crew. And we do data collection and sampling at this site here at the Mississippi, a little bit upstream of the bridge, as well as other sites along the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River is the largest river basin within the United States and provides substantial inland transportation to and from the Gulf of Mexico. This major waterway supports over $400 billion in gross domestic products for the U.S. each year. Monitoring suspended sediment loads and flow data within this system is essential in supporting many ongoing scientific efforts from many agencies that work to improve our understanding of how this system is changing over time. The Mississippi River at Vicksburg is one of the many large river locations of which the U.S. Geological Survey routinely collects data to monitor water quality and suspended sediment. Flow weighted and depth integrated samples are collected at this site 14 times per year. In the following video segments, we will be on the Mississippi River here at Vicksburg and later at a second location on the Mississippi River at Baton Rouge. During these videos, we will be focusing on our large river crew's safety, as safety is our number one key, and how we apply our USGS standards, methods, to collect suspended sediment and flow measurements. We will be demonstrating the specific equipment we use, and the samples we deploy, and how our USGS crews use those to collect these data on large, deep, and fast-moving rivers like the Mississippi. Launching boats on the Mississippi River can be challenging, especially at flood stages. At times, we have paid crane operators to lift our sampling boats off of the trailers and into the river because of either damaged or inaccessible launching ramps.
Another main part of our boat safety includes going over our emergency routine if someone were by chance to fall overboard. So Al is our boat captain. Uh, he's in charge of the boat while we're sampling. And so I want him to go over another safety item that we follow and we uh, can use if we need to, and it's the man overboard drill. Al, would you explain what we go through and how we practice that? Well, man overboard means exactly that. Someone has fallen overboard the boat. Uh, the very first thing we would do is get a third person, if one is available, to keep an eye on whoever has gone overboard. All engines go to neutral till we uh, know exactly where that person is. We can also mark a waypoint for that last position. And if we need assistance uh, after that, we have our radio where we can call uh, emergency personnel to right. help us. And we, uh, you monitor channel 16. Mm -hmm. and 16 and 19. 19 is Vicksburg traffic. And so That's we have correct. several uh, uh, manufacturers and operators that are on the river that can respond immediately. We have contacts here in Vicksburg that uh, they are first responders for anything we need on the river in an emergency situation. Good. The Zephyr cable cutters we keep on our boats is a very important emergency tool that we hope to never need. Regrettably, several years ago, we did have one of our boat crews that capsized while collecting bed material samples on the Chafalaya River. During a routine sample collection at a higher stage, the bed material sampler became wedged on a snag on the bottom of the river, which ended up overturning the boat before the crew could reach the cable to cut it with the smaller hand-sized wire cutters. Fortunately, all of those crew members were unhurt and were rescued. Since that time, the USGS has made great improvements to our emergency training in these situations. Also, we have modified our methods and locations of rigs when we collect these type of bed material samples. Those sampling rigs are now located on the bow of the boat instead of the rear. And if a snag is encountered, the boat will act more like it's anchored and not swing to the sideways position, which could overturn the vessel. original cutters that we had on board to cut our cable if we were to get snagged on something but they're they're small the opening small and to reach out and grab the cable it could be hindered the boat could be at an angle it's very difficult in an emergency situation to use something like this it will work but we've got another device that we now use it's called a zephyr we keep it here mounted on the side of the boat So this is a tool that the Coast Guard rescue helicopters use on their cables. And so the way it works is you can actually hook over the cable, it goes into this groove, and then you, and that's the way it works. And so if we were need to cut the cable, we could hook it here, operate it, and we could dispatch the sample from the boat.
Be sure to watch the next episode about ADCP, where we discuss large river ADCP measurements, ADCP boat mounts, external GPS and heading sensors, initial measurement setup, compass calibration, external heading sensor offset check, ADCP measurements, QAQC of those measurements, and high water overbank flow measurements. <laughs>